Father, we thank you again for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we have nothing to lose while on this journey with you. We pray and ask now that you would continue to allow your presence to fill this place. Speak to us this morning. Encourage our hearts. Keep me hidden behind this wood of cross. You go forth with power convicting our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. because 
Her dilemma is not exclusive only to her. All right, all right. Yeah. All of us can find ourselves in a situation where life is good, and then all of a sudden things change. Your job can lay you off. Your health can begin to fail. Yes, uh, the one you're depending upon can pass away. A certain woman, anyone, can be this one.
to suffer. Anybody ever been there? When you have nothing to settle your debts. You, you can't see how am I going to make it out of this jam that I'm in. Am I talking to myself? How do I get out of this? I don't see any chance of it. I don't see how I can fix it. I don't know who I can call upon. What can I do? That's, that's where she's at. So the Bible says that she, she goes to the prophet. She begins to explain to him. Again, it's not the issue that her husband is dead. She's already overcome that. She has two sons. See, if the creditor never would have come for her sons, she never would have went to the prophet. Are you all with me? They sometimes miss that point right there. Uh, and so she's at the prophet, she's before the prophet, this woman who's been uh, someone who represents being forsaken as well as oppressed. Mm -hmm. Sound like somebody you know? Forsaken in that her husband is gone, the one who protected her, who provided for her, he's gone, but now the creditor comes to oppress her, beginning to experience some trouble. She goes to the prophet, because she needs some help. And when she gets to the prophet, she explains to him why she's in this situation that she's in and why she needs some help. He asks the question, what shall I do for you? Mm -hmm. Now, this had me up all night. Really. I, all night I have been struggling with why would Elijah ask her a question? But not just one question, because when he asks, what shall I do for you? He then says, tell me, what do you have in the house? Now I'm wondering, well, why is it that he asks her a question but never gives her an opportunity to receive? And that literally had me up all night. Y'all pray the Lord give me some strength. I'm going to help me out. And so I'm looking at this and asking, why is it, Lord, that, that, that she asked, what, or he asked, what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have in the house? Why don't you let the woman answer? <laughs> because sometimes we, we think we just know what we want done for us. I'm in trouble and I know how I need to fix it and all I want you to do is just listen to what I want. Yeah. Right. Anybody like that? Yeah. What, what shall I do? But this word do is a word that means to create. So he's really saying to the woman, what shall I create for you. Somebody ought to see that now. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> Not what shall I do, but what shall I create? Well, that's a whole net that chance. Yeah. Have I witnessed? Yeah. Because I know some stuff I need to create. Yes. Yeah. And when something is created, in other words, it, it, you may not have.
same time, it's worthless. Isn't it? The very thing that, that we use to annoy is also considered worthless. Because it's not like cooking oil. Even they did not like uh, fuel. So it wasn't considered to be that. And some of you are probably thinking right now, what do I have that the Lord can use? But what I have is worthless. It's not, it's not valid. So she, she's, she's saying, I have some oil. But she knows it's worthless. Share a couple of theological lessons with you and I'll get out your way. The, the, the first one is this. The text calls for more than wishful thinking. See, sometimes, Lord, I want you to do something, you know, and I'm just wishing. Bible says that he also tells her when you collect those vessels, I want you to go. 
pouring their oil into the vessels, excited. I've been trying to figure out, Lord, why would you tell them to shut the door? Because right before that, he says, shut the door, and then they're pouring their oil. You sometimes have to shut the door because folk can't take you being excited. Like it's not 
much to you. But in the hands of God, He can do a whole lot with you. And as I witness to that, so, so don't you get caught up with what you have or what you don't have. Psalm said, Lord, I'm available to you. I offer everything that I have to you. Because I know as long as it's in your hands, everything's going to be all right. Because God has an ability to create something out of nothing. Have I witnessed? What is it that you need the Lord to do for you tomorrow? What is it that you need the Lord to create for you today? I tell you, he's able to create today. Last time I checked, the Bible said that he took dust and created man. Now, not only that, but there's a widow woman in Zarephath that, that she said, all I have is just a little oil and a little meal, but we don't eat it and die. And the last time I checked, she offered it to the Lord, and the Lord blessed it, so she has more than enough. Yeah. The Bible says there's a little oil, two fish, and five loaves of bread. But look at what God created out of two fish and five loaves of bread. What can God do with the little bit that you offer?
except a jar of oil. He can take some oil that was not valuable. And bless this woman for several days and live her life. We said he's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. What can he do? Those things that seem worthless to everybody else in our lives. Trust him. Offer yourself to him. Trust that God will take care of you. You need to hustle and take care of yourself. Anybody want to Thank you.